Today we're going to talk about the commutative property of multiplication and how we can use this property to help us find products. Before we begin, stop and make sure that you have your materials, your notes, a pencil, and a highlighter. And if you need to grab something, pause the video now. Remember, while you're working, if you don't understand something, write a question mark next to it in your notes. Let's begin with our vocabulary words. Our first two words are review words. Remember, factors are the numbers being multiplied, and the product is the answer to a multiplication problem. The commutative property of multiplication says, when you change the order of the factors, the product stays the same. So this is like our commutative property of addition, where you can add numbers in any order and still get the same sum, except this time we can multiply in any order and still get the same product. Remember, when we're writing a multiplication equation, we've talked about our first factor is the number of groups multiplied by the number in each group to equal our product. Or if we're using an array, we take the number of rows multiplied by the number in each row to get our product. So let's look at some examples of the commutative property. If I have six pencils, I could put them into two groups of three which would be 2 times 3 equals 6, or I could take my 6 pencils and I could have them in 3 groups of 2. 3 times 2 equals 6. So 2 times 3 is equal to 3 times 2. Both of those multiplication sentences still give me a total of 6 pencils. That's our commutative property. As long as the factors are the same, our product should be the same. So 2 and 3 or 3 and 2, we're using the same factors. Let's try it with a word problem. Dave works at HEB. He arranges 15 boxes of juice in rows on the shelf. What are two ways he can arrange the boxes in equal rows? So what if Dave arranges the boxes in three equal rows? My first step would be to draw three equal rows. And then I want to put boxes in each row until I've used all 15. I'm going to put one box in a row at a time. So I've put out three boxes, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I've put out my 15 boxes. So I have three rows, one, two, three, and I have five boxes in each row. So when I write my multiplication sentence, my first number should be my number of rows, and then I multiply by my second factor, the number in each row, three times five, and I get a product of 15. There's 15 boxes in all. What would happen if Dave arranges the boxes in five equal rows? My first step is to draw five equal rows. And once again, I want to put the boxes in the rows one at a time. One, two, three, four, five. Then I move to my, keep going. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I keep going until I get to 15. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I have five rows. And in each row is three juice boxes. So five rows of three. And when I write a multiplication sentence, I write my number of rows times the number in each row for my total. So five times three equals 15.
So the two ways Dave can arrange the boxes are three rows of five or five rows of three. So I know that three times five is equal to five times three. And that's my commutative property. I still have 15 boxes of juice. I just arranged them in two different ways. Let's practice writing multiplication sentences for the arrays. If I look at my first array on the left, I want to count the number of rows. One, two, that's my first factor, and I multiply it by the number in each row. One, two, three, four, five, six. So my second factor is a six. I have two rows of six. And then when I multiply that, I get a product of 12. Two times six equals 12. If we look at our second array, First, we want to count the number of rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our first factor is 6. Then we count the number in each row. 1, 2. So our second factor is 2. We take the number of rows multiplied by the number in each row to get our product. We can also skip count by twos to help us find our product. And we have a product of 12. 6 times 2 equals 12. So my arrays are basically the same, but one of them has two rows of 6 and the other one has six rows of 2. It's like I turn my array on the side to make a new array. Let's try one more. Write a multiplication sentence for the model. Then use the commutative property to write the related multiplication sentence. Remember, when you're writing a multiplication sentence, your first number is the number of groups or the number of rows. And then you multiply it by the number in each group to get your product. So first we count our groups, and I see two groups. So my first factor is two. Then I count the number of stars in each group. I see eight stars in each group, so I have a multiplication sentence, two times eight, two groups of eight. And it equals sixteen. And then to use my commutative property, I'm going to turn my factors around. So instead of 2 times 8, I can say 8 times 2 equals 16. Now you try. In your notes, write a multiplication sentence for each model. Then use the commutative property of multiplication to write a related multiplication sentence. Remember, to do this, you just have to change the order of the factors. I'll see you guys next week. Remember to behave for the sub. If I get a positive report, you get four positive dojo points, but if I get a negative report, you will lose three dojo points. So make sure you're on your best behavior.